It's another game day. So that means it's another game day update. I'm Kelsey. I'm joined by Noah Magaro George because the Grizzlies are taking on the Spurs tonight. So I could think of no one else better to talk to me about this matchup. Look, Noah, there's a lot going on right now. Um, the This is the first of four meetings between these two teams. The Grizzlies have won three of their last four. The Spurs are on a four game losing streak, hoping to snap that tonight. Um, Adams right now for us is questionable. And I know Doug McDermott is questionable. Zach Collins out for you guys. Does it change how the Spurs approach this game? If Steven Adams does or does not play? I don't think it really does. Maybe Yaka Pirtle has a better time rebounding the ball, but outside of that, I don't really think so. The Spurs are really a very system heavy team this year. There's not a lot of individuality. It's a lot of, you know, parts that make a whole. So I don't think it changes how they approach this game at all. All right. Well, let's go to, I guess, kind of the more exciting matchups, because although I would love to see a Jakob Pertl, Steven Adams matchup, I think what everyone <laughs> is looking for is the backcourts of these teams. Um, we got Desmond and jaw and then Devin and Keldon and Oh my gosh, like just the scoring power of those four guys. Um, let's start with Desmond Devin, because I personally am most excited about that. Desmond right now averaging 24 points a game. Devin just a little bit under 21, both third year guys. What excites you the most about that matchup specifically? I think it's really interesting because if I'm not incorrect, I think they're from the same draft class, right? And they mm -hmm. were drafted one like kind of towards the end of the first round, the other one in the lottery, but they've had very similar developmental paths where they were mostly catch and shoot guys. And you saw them kind of get downhill off DHOs off of screens. And now they're self-creating a little bit and they've really both taken these massive jumps in their third year. So I'm excited to see, you know, how do they defend each other? You know, how do they kind of mirror each other on offense? I think it's going to be maybe the best matchup. Cause if I'm honest, I don't think anyone's containing John Morant. <laughs> well, let's talk about John Morant and he is having just such an incredible season. He's averaging 28 and a half points per game. And I looked it up last year against the Spurs. He, um, 41 points per game, <laughs> six assists, six rebounds, 83% from the three, 65% from the field. Like the numbers were just outrageous in the three games he played against the Spurs last year, where he won all three of them. Do you expect the same? Like who's the defensive stopper for the Spurs? And I know, I know it's a contain, it's a slow down, not a stop. That's a really tough question to answer. You would think that Probably Trey Jones is going to get the call at the at the beginning of the game, but shout out the Jones brothers. Exactly. That's another thing to watch for. It's always fun to see the brothers reunite. But yeah, I just don't see anybody even really slowing him down. I'm sure they're gonna throw a lot of different looks at him. It'll probably be Trey Jones at the start. Maybe Vassell gets a couple of possessions, but outside of that, maybe Jeremy Sohan, the rookie who they drafted to be that, you know, versatile stopper, can cover one through five on, you know, occasion, but it's going to be a tough night. You know, if, if he averaged 41, six and six a year ago on 60, whatever percent shooting and DeJounte Murray, who's largely considered one of the best perimeter defenders in the NBA was on the Spurs. You remove him from the equation. I don't think it's going to be much better. So I'm expecting him to have another scoring outburst, probably at San Antonio's expense. Yikes. I mean, Good for us, I guess. Yikes for San Antonio. <laughs> I'm going to bring up two team things from you, and I'd like to see from your perspective, do you want the good or the bad first? Let's start with the bad. That way we can kind of end on a good note. Okay, so I'm going to do the bad from your perspective, which means it's the good from my perspective. So <laughs> the Grizzlies are a top 10 team in fast break points. Last year, they were leading the league the entire year in that category. The Spurs right now are dead last in transition defense allowing opponents to score in the fast break what does that say about the way the Grizzlies score the way they push the pace and the way San Antonio defends in the transition yeah I mean you look at that Grizzlies team and you know thank God for league pass I get to watch all the teams that I want and the Grizzlies have been one of the ones on the top of my list even without Jaron Jackson Jr and you just see the way they push the pace they communicate really well they fill the lanes properly on fast breaks they turn defense to offense and for San Antonio, you know, they do have, you know, good athleticism, but they have a lot of young guys who just haven't quite figured out how to communicate in transition. They're committing a lot of live ball turnovers and they're bad passes. It, it, it puts them at a disadvantage, right? Like if you're turning the ball over and it's a bad pass and you're putting your you know opponent on the break and you really don't have any way to stop that, it's not going to end up good. So I think that is a major thing to watch out for this game. It's 
I just don't see it being very good for the Spurs. So like you mentioned, it is the bad for the Spurs and it's probably going to continue to be bad for them, especially against this Grizzlies team that really loves to get out in transition. But I said there was a good as well, which means it's a bad for us. The Grizzlies defense has been somewhat inconsistent when covering the perimeter and allowing three point shots. The Spurs are top, top 10 in the league uh, in three point shooting as well as efficiency. How does that alter the way that the Grizzlies are able to one stop points from going up on to the fourth, but also to the Spurs keeping them in because threes are more threes are worth more than twos. And we always say this, you can't really compete if a team is shooting the lights out in three and you're getting layups. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out how much of this is real from San Antonio. I mean, we know that Keldon Johnson can shoot the ball. Devin Vassell has been pretty good since coming in the NBA, but you know, they haven't really shot the three ball that well over the last couple of seasons. And so this early season outburst, this is probably a good test. If it's real, they could really put up a bunch of points on this team, right? They've got Josh Richardson as well. They've also got Doug McDermott. Trey Jones is knocking down the three this season as well. But if it isn't real, uh, you know, that that could be something that we see pop up this season. I mean, they've been happy to, or opponents have been happy to leave guys open. They've had a hard time covering Keldon Johnson and Devin Vassell and the other guys we mentioned because of the motion offense. There's constant movement from players, constant movement of the screening, dribble handoffs, cuts to the basket, relocation. So they are a tough team to cover just because they make you communicate on the defensive end. But, you know, there is a chance that this three-point shooting isn't real. So I, 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 want it, I want it to be real. I very much want it to be real. But it could be one of those nights where they shoot 32%, 33%, and we go, yeah, maybe they aren't, you know, top 10 shooting team in the NBA after all. But I'm hoping it's the opposite. I'm hoping it is real. No, you're right. And, and it will be a good test. It'll be a great test today because you know that Dylan Brooks is one of the best perimeter defenders. So he will, I'm assuming, try and take away a little bit of what Keldon Johnson sees and then everyone else, um, I mean, should or won't step up. It will, it's just a matter of, this is the first of four games, like I said. So it's going to be, um, everything's kind of just up in the air, I'd say, because once we get to the third and fourth game, you and I will be able to sit here and be like, well, <laughs> it is or it isn't. Um, okay, let me take let me take Desmond Jaw, Devin Keldon off of the board right now. One person, because this is the first time the Grizzlies fans are watching the Spurs, one person to look out for. I think Yaka Pertle. I mean, I think when you when you play the Spurs, even from a perspective that he's just so underrated. You know, I think a lot of people, even Spurs fans at time, go, oh, well, he needs to dunk the ball more. Oh, he needs to make free throws. But I think that really kind of neglects to pay attention to what he does well. He's an elite screener. He's a great short roll passer. They've asked him to be this fulcrum of the offense as a facilitator from the elbows. He's mm -hmm. a guy who protects the rim at a high level. He doesn't commit a lot of fouls. He alters a lot of shots at the rim. So if there's someone to watch for, I think it's Yaka Pertl. What he does isn't, I guess, traditionally like sexy by basketball standards, but you can look up at the box score after going, you did this guy do anything? And then suddenly it's, you know, 11 points, 12 rebounds, eight assists, you know, four blocks. And he, he can have those games. So I think he's a guy who you may not want to watch for exciting basketball, but he's definitely someone who makes them go, or at least helps them get into their offense and their defense. Yeah. I mean, that's very much like Steven Adams as well. See, like you watch Steven Adams, you're like, wow, he's making great passes and he's getting rebounds. But then some days he'll have two points and some days he'll look up and it'll feel the same as the two point games, but he'll have <laughs> 17. And you're like, Oh, okay. Steven. Um, one thing to know is that I'm so sorry, Yaka Pertle. I know he's great, but the only thing I think about when I think about this matchup <laughs> is jaws dunk on him. It's the only thing. Yeah. Uh, that Pirtle, was a pretty tremendous game. dunk. <laughs> uh, hey, maybe so. Maybe he's looking for revenge after that. That was honestly, it was hard not to get up out of my seat, even as like, not even a fan, not even just like a media member, just like someone who likes basketball. Basketball. That yeah. was such an incredible play last season. <laughs> Noah, I appreciate your time this morning so much. I'm excited to get to talk to you all season long. One of four. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I'm looking forward to coming back. Uh, Grizzlies fans, today's game is a regular time. We're tipping off at 7 p.m. Central time, so you can tune into Valley Sports uh, Southeast. Pre-game is at 6.30. Like I said, game tips off at 7, or you can watch it on the Valley Sports Plus app.